Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about combinations. This is part of the combinatorics uh, part of this uh, course. And um, as usual, uh, I do recommend you to watch this lecture on unizor.com rather than just on YouTube or, or any other um, website because the unizor.com is an educational website which has uh, notes for every lecture and it also allows you to um, organize the whole educational process um, around this course. All right, so um, today's topic is combination with repetitions. Well, we have already covered the regular combinations and um, for the purposes of this lecture I would like to very, very um, briefly repeat um, how to come up with a formula for the number of regular combinations. So, assuming we have n different objects, different, all, all, all objects are different, and we are picking k out of these n objects. Question is how many different ways of picking is possible. And one of the simplest methods is to build the following model so uh, of this process of, of picking the combination. So first I assume that I put all my n objects into the row uh, in some particular order and there are, as we know, n factorial of different ways to position n uh, objects uh, in, in some specific order. Then I cut k objects from the beginning, leaving n minus k objects to the right. Let's call this head, and this is tail of my ordered sequence. Now, obviously, all the combinations within the uh, head itself produce exactly the same picking. It's the same k objects um, which are picked no matter how many times I, I permute, I change the order within these k's. Similarly, no matter how many times I change the order here, I still have the same um, combination picked. Um, but any other change when they are exchanging the objects does produce a different one. So, if every one of these combinations, permutations, and every one of these combinations produce exactly the same pick out of n factorial, I have to basically divide it by k, k factorial and n minus k factorial to basically um, to glue together, if you wish, all these permutations of the entire sets, uh, entire set into the groups when uh, the result of picking is actually the same. So it's k factorial of these permutations and n minus k factorial of these. So any permutations within actually are producing the same combination which I have picked. Now, it's not just the repetition which is my purpose to, uh, to derive this formula again. Um, there is a, I would say, educational sense in, in repeating this. And what's the educational lesson? You have to pick the right model of the process um, which you are involved. So in this particular process uh, of checking certain number, of picking up certain number of uh, objects uh, out of a bigger set, I have chosen um, to model this process through putting in the order of the entire set cutting off the head of this as my pick and then analyzing each one of uh, the parts which I'm bro breaking the whole, uh, the whole set in. And that actually allows me to derive the formula. Okay, now we will consider a different problem. Uh, it's also about combinations, but it's a different kind of combinations, which obviously doesn't really um, uh, seem to be uh, like producing a formula immediately, right up front. You still have to do some, some clever modeling, if you wish. So, let's just explain, let me explain what I mean. Now, what is the combinations with repetition? Well, 
in the previous case, I had n different objects, and as soon as I pick one, there is less left, obviously, right? So I pick the first k, and there is n minus k left. Now, in this case, we can uh, uh, explain it in two different ways. One is, as soon as I pick an object, I record what exactly the object I picked, and I put it back into the set. So I always have exactly the same set of n different things to choose from. Um, now, uh, it obviously completely changes the picture. Another explanation of exactly the same would be um, instead of putting back the same object, I assume that there is some other object of the same type actually replacing the one which, which I have picked. And um, the, uh, the particular example which I am uh, using in the notes for this lecture on Unizor.com is consider you are buying a certain number of bottles of wine and you come to the store and uh, let's just for simplicity uh, decide the following uh, the store has only three types of wine uh, let's say red white and sparkling well that's just easier for the purpose of this so let's say we have only three types of wine and I have to pick up five bottles now in the previous in the regular combination obviously I cannot pick more than I have so K was always restricted on the top by N but in this case since I'm returning back or I have an unlimited store, unlimited uh, quantities of, of the wine of each type in the store, well, presuming unlimited, um, then my k can be any number, can be greater than uh, n in this case. So in this case, n is equal to 3, and, can, uh, and k, number of picks which I have to make, is 5. So I have to make, uh, I have to make a pick of 5 different uh, bottles of wine and I have these three different types of wine so obviously whenever I pick the red wine there is still some red wine left in the store well that's what store is for right so now I have to come up with the formula which gives me again the same thing as before number of different combinations now I can pick let's like, say one red one white and three sparkling or three red one white and white sparkling, etc. Or no red, no white, and all five bottles sparkling. I mean, there are all different combinations. Question is how many of them? Now, without the proper modeling, you cannot really approach this pro uh, pro problem. And I'm sure there are different modelings. And I'm suggesting right now something which is relatively typical in the combinatorial problems. And here is what I suggest. Let's uh, designate a bottle of wine which I have chosen with the letter W regardless of the type so I have five letter W five bottles, uh, bottles of wine now I will use two slashes to separate let's say this and this and I said that the first group is red the second is white and the third is sparkling. So in this case, this particular string of five letters W and two slashes represents a pick of two red, one white, and two sparkling. Now, if I will put slashes, let's say, here, that means I have no reds, no whites, and all five sparkling. If I put slash one here, and one here, it means no red, four whites, and one sparkling, etc. So, as you see, these strings of seven characters, five W's, and two slashes, completely uh, cover all the different cases which are possible to pick different uh, kinds of wine. So, this is the model which I'm choosing. And if I'm looking at the model in this way, it's actually uh, much clearer how should I solve this particular problem. Because all I have to do is I have 
seven places and all I have to do is to pick two places to put slashes in or five places to put W's in which is a regular problem with combinations so I have seven places and I have to choose two now we have exactly the same regular combinations as before so if I choose for instance this and this it means that the others are W's and these two are slashes and that signifies two red, no white and three sparklings or whatever other two I choose out, or, uh, out of seven or symmetrically and you know that uh, combinations are symmetrical relative to k and n minus k choosing k actually is the same as choosing n minus k um, objects so in this case my problem actually has been reduced using this particular model to a problem of how many uh, combinations of two objects out of seven exist so let's generalize well in this particular case it's c72 which is 7 factorial divided by 2 factorial and 5 factorial now 5 factorial and this is 7 so I have 6 and 7 left because everything from 5 will be reduced to this so 6 times 7 is 42 divided by 2 which is 21 so I have 21 different combinations and well if you really want to you can just try explicitly to write down all the different combinations and you should, you should come up with 21 anyway it's time to generalize <coughs> so let's again consider we have the same kind of uh, uh, problem as as I said with wine now we have instead of three different types of wine we have n different types of wine okay and we have to pick k bottles right now to pick k bottles means that now I have to pick n types of wine right because there are unlimited quantities of wine of every type because that's the combination with repetition now which means that my k bottles of wine so these are my k bottles of wine should be divided by how many separators I should actually put here to separate in n different groups well obviously to separate in two groups I need one separator to, to separate in three groups uh, as before in the previous problem I need two uh, separators to separate in n group I need obviously n minus one separators and they actually some of them might be in front of the beginning or after the last one which means that corresponding group will not have any representative in my in my combination so I have k objects and I have n minus one separators and out of the total number of characters in this case which is k plus n minus one I have to choose either k bottles or n minus one separators which is exactly the same quantity which is equal to k plus n minus 1 factorial divided by k factorial and n minus 1 factorial so that's the general formula and what's very important the lesson which you should really get from this is you have to think about how to cleverly model the problem which you have because if you forget about this particular representation as a string of characters like this then it's not really easy to think about why this particular formula represents the number of uh, combinations of k objects out of n different types considering we have an unlimited number of representative of each, of each type so that's not obvious but with a proper modeling, you, 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 again, I'm, I'm using the word clever. 
it, it's it's really a little sneaky a little smart a little basically based on some experience or previously uh, solved problems this is an approach and this the coming up with this particular approach that's the purpose of, of, of the whole course actually in combinatorics in particular because in combinatorics as I was telling you before the correct and incorrect solutions are very close to each other it's very easy to make a wrong model or may, uh, to miss some particular approach or combination etc and to come up with a different result um, which which is basically wrong right so you, it's, it's not like solving the equation when you get the, uh, the solution to the equation you substitute it back and, and you don't see the identity right that means that you're wrong here it's not obvious when you are wrong and when you are not uh, and if it's not obvious that you are wrong what's very important is to come up with a proper modeling the proper presentation of your prob problem and in this case the proper presentation seems to be not only not the unique one but one of the proper representations is as I was just saying to you Okay. <coughs> All right. So let's consider a few trivial examples. Now we have come up with this formula, and let me repeat it here. Uh, C of uh, n k plus n minus one. Uh, by k equals uh, k plus n minus 1 factorial k factorial n minus 1 okay now let's consider simple cases and at least if we are uh, correct in this particular formula then in, in these simple cases we might have the correct results, right? If we break some of the simple trivial case means that we made a mistake and the formula is incorrect and our modeling is completely wrong, right? Okay, so what simple cases I have? Example number one, n equals to one. So I have only one type of objects. I have an unlimited number of these bottles of one particular type and I have to pick K out of them. How many different ways to pick up K bottles of one and only one type? Well, there is only one type, so there is no choice basically. One and only one result should be, right? So the quantity should be equal to, to one. Well, let's check it out. Um, now I have n is equal to 1 which means n minus 1 is 0 so I have C of k k on the left right which is let's put it here it's uh, k factorial divided by k factorial and 0 factorial now 0 factorial as we remember is 1 so we have 1 well then everything seems to be fine next case let's say n is equal to 2 so I have two types again back to the bottles of wine so I have two types of wine and I have to pick up k, k bottles right now what combinations I can have well I can have zero bottles of one type and k bottles of another type or one type one bottle of one type and k minus one of another type etc k bottles of one and zero of another so these are all combinations which are possible if I have only two types of wine and I need a set of k bottles then these are uh, combinations of two different types of wine among k bottles now how many of those are from zero to k it's k plus one right well let's check it out the formula for n is equal to two it's k plus one and n is 2, so 2 minus 1, okay, factorial divided by k factorial times 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 factorial. So it's k plus 1 factorial divided by k factorial. Now, you remember, factorial is the product of all the numbers from 1 to this one. So on the top I have from 1 to k plus 1. 
on the bottom I have from 1 to k. So all of these from 1 to k are reducing to each other and the only thing which is left is the k plus 1 here. So that's fine too. Next. Next example. What if k is equal to 0? So I have to pick up no bottles. How, well, this is an empty set, right? How many different empty sets exist? Well, there is always one empty set, which contains basically nothing. And so my result should be equal to 1. Let's check it out. If k is equal to 0, I have n minus 1 factorial divided by 0 factorial is 1 and n minus 1 factorial, which is 1. Well, that's what we expected, right? And the last example, k is equal to 1. I have to pick only one bottle out of n different types, which means, obviously, it's supposed to be n different combinations, right? So I have to have n different combinations. Let's check it out. If k is equal to 1, I have n factorial on the top. 1 is 1 factorial is 1, and n minus 1 factorial. Again, this is n factorial, so it's from n product from n to 1, and this is product from n minus 1 to 1. So n is the only which is not reducible, so it's the result is n, which corresponds. So as we see, in all the trivial cases, our formula is correct. Does it prove it? Well, obviously it's not a proof. If you really want a proof, you might actually consider to prove this by induction or something like, like, like that. Well, I would like to just skip this particular part. Again, it's not my intention right now to get into a very, very uh, rigorous presentation um, as long as, uh, and by the way, it's, it, it's not very difficult to come up with this formula using um, induction. So let's not waste our time. Again, the most important thing is to come up with a model. As soon as you come up with the right model, like strings in this particular case, you'll be fine and you can derive the correct decision. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about combinations with repetitions. Um, as always, if you go to unizor.com site, you can engage into educational process by signing in, having a supervisor or a parent who enroll you in, in, in the class and you will be able to, 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 to get through exams, check your results, the site is completely free and I welcome everybody over there. Uh, so that's it for today. Thanks very much and good luck.